about, about the ego and how it did. But uh, in my reading, I found out in Palestine and in those places, the ego was a symbol to them of strength and power. Mm -hmm. And today, the hills, the hillsides, and the trees and everything would uh, grow up. And in between, there was a hollow in the ground. In our time, back then they called it a ravine. But in our time, we call it a valley. Mm -hmm. So the eagle would go down. I don't know, I was really fascinated by it, but uh, the eagle would go down. And it said from ancient times, he had been regarded as their symbol of courage and power because of the aptitudes to which it flies. It was sought to shed and renew his feathers and with them his strength. The eagle was getting old and we always symbolize or refer to him as the one that fly high and soars high. But to know why, it's because he had to go down. And it, what they said, they took a study. And when he went down, and like I say, he was getting older, and his load was getting old, uh, heavier. And when he went down into the valley, he would pick up, pick off those old feathers that kept him, I'm going to say, burden down because I'm going to get to that, how we be burdened down with things. But we don't have to be a eagle. But we can go down on our knees in prayer and ask God to help us, to help us. And then the eagle also has extraordinary sight, which sees a storm hours away. And it's known to be able to gaze in the sun. And I thought about something our late pastor said. You know that eagle, when he takes off these feathers and flies upward to, to fly and soar. He soars. That's, he has more strength to soar because some of that weight is taken. Thin weight. Thin things that bother us is taken off of this eagle. So it can fly toward the sun. And I, I heard him say one time about it. One thing about it. We can look at the sun but the one we have to look at is the S-O-N. Because he is the one who can help us out of everything that we need. And when it says, shall renew, it's the one who satisfies thy mouth with good things. So thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And we become weary, discontented, and vexed by continued endurance. But these things will pass. These things will pass. And when it's waiting, the waiting is more at to stay in place in expectation of. We know where we come from. We have been saved down through the years. But sometimes and most times we have to wait on God. Wait on Him. Sometimes we go ahead of Him and then we have to get somebody to pray for us like the children of Israel did with Isaiah. And uh, <clears throat> I look at the mount up, when you mount up with these, the wings, and we have to mount up on the word of God. Yes. We yes. have to mount up on the word of God. Yes. Yes. And that's why the people over there in those countries, Palestine, Jerusalem, because they were fascinated by how he could mount up and fly up. And I compared it with today. I said, we aren't in big, but we can mount up with the word of God. We have to go down in prayer, truly pray, and seek the Lord. Stay with God. Hold on to him. Psalm 27, 14 said, wait on the Lord. Be of good care, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You might get tired of waiting, but waiting. And in this passage of scripture, Isaiah was letting them know that the great uh, Messiah was going to come. And like I said, it was 700 and some years. But he prophesied it to them. He was giving them hope to hold on. Mm -hmm. 
And Psalm 34 and 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Oh, yeah. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him. Not just some, but all of them. Sometimes we get our own self in a, in a fix, like, the, uh, like Israel did, and somebody had to come along and pray for him and help him out of it. But they didn't wait on God. <clears throat> and that's why it was in the situation they was in. And then when they became in captivity, sometimes we become in captivity of things that you shouldn't be in. But God, he always has a remnant for you. First Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Psalm 126 and 5 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. Psalm 30 and 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in waiting on him, the scripture came to me and after winners, I thought about Mother Winners. She always used to say, be still, be still and know that I am God. There are times we have to be still and know that, that I am God. He's letting us know today a lot of times Things are going on around us, but we cannot bow down. We cannot bow down. We have to hold on to the one who has brought us thus far. Oh, yeah. And we can't let go. We can't let go. But God, he is, he's always there. He is always there. And I thank God because so many trials and temptations have come in this day and time, and it's not like it was when I came into the church, but God knows all things. And I thought about our pastor uh, Thursday night and doing the word of God. He has everything that we need. All we got to do is stay in, stay in connection and have that relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And we can be like that eagle. Don't we don't have to uh, pick off no wings, but pick off the things that's not pleasing the God. Some people think the little things, they happen, but it's not helpful. We've got to seek the Lord. It says, seek him while he may be found. Call upon him. Yeah. Call upon him while he is near. Because he is a true and living God. And if he was giving them hope in this time, in captivity, and it was coming to an end, they had to stay. This time they had to stay because they was in capti captivity. And um, yesterday, as uh, Sister Carla was giving her testimony, a lot of times it's good to share with people, say what you're going through. But I thought about the uh, Word of God and Revelations. We have to be a testimony, so we're going to have to go through something mm -hmm. and let people know how God will bring you out. He will bring you out. He's brought many of us out of a lot of the things when we could have ran around the streets or just like the man was setting himself on fire. The enemy will come to your mind, but when you know God, hold on to him. Oh, yeah. Hold on to him. Wait on him. Speaking Thursday night, Lord, I thank you. I was going to stop to read it because I had to pick up some little things. And the Spirit of the Lord said, go to food line. I didn't want to go out of my way. My God. Lord, I thank you. You know God is good. And this, may, this has happened about three times in the last three months. When I went to food line, I went to pay for what little bit of stuff I had. The lady said, I got it. I got be obedient for the little things. We have to be obedient to the little things, and then greater things will come. And that's letting him know that we trust him. I could have said, No, I'm going right on down the river, that's right straight down the highway. But I had to turn on and go. 
So I said, Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. I just thank you. And I find out it's the obedience of God. And another little test that I ask you all to do. I ask God, and I'm not ashamed to tell it, to take me back to when I first got saved. Uh -huh. We was going. It didn't mind of how long or whatever, but we went. The trials and things came, but we was holding on to the word of God. But just let God know that you need to go back to where you came from. And that was knowing who Jesus Christ was. Oh, yeah. And that really uh, kind of has steered me. And I said, Lord, I've been through the storms and I've been through the rains, but you have held me close over these I'm going to say 40 years. <laughs> Over these 40 years. And I won't let go because he has truly, truly, truly blessed me. He has truly blessed me. Oh, yeah. I wanted to go back to the spirit. Because I wasn't afraid to get up, talk, sing, or whatever. Even though I couldn't carry a tune, I would get up and, and, and sing. But I thank the Lord because... That going back, you will have opposition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these things come to help us and yes. make us strong. Yes. And if I knew that then, why isn't it happening now? So I just say, God, just take me back. Yes. Me back. Yes. Take me back to where I first started. And a lot of times when they talk about uh, uh, different things that had happened in the past, yes, I know because I was always here. Because that's what they told us. Be faithful. Not only be faithful, but yes. just be faithful. <laughs> and stay in the word. And as Bishop Posey can attest to this, they even let us know. Go to the school they had. Stay in the word. Come to your uh, Sunday schools in YP. So we was here all the time. And that instills the word of God in you. Yes. So I said, Lord, I thank you. Because when I look back, I thank God. I thank God. And I said, I guess I'm going to run until I can't run no more because he has been too good to me. He has brought me through many, 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 many things. Many, many things. Opposition's come against you. Things have hurt you to your heart. But there was a song with uh, um, uh, Richard Smallwood had a uh, sang. Hold on and don't let go. And one verse in there said, these valleys come because he is preparing you. So hold on and don't let go. 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 Stay with God. Stay with God. And stay in the word. Stay in the word. That is your strength. And sometimes you know you may want to call this one or that one, but call Jesus. Call him. Call Jesus. And when you know the word, he will send you to it. And so I just thank the Lord because he's been good to me. And be like that eagle. If you want to go up, you can't be jealous of folks who's going up because they have to apply themselves. You have to apply yourself to do what God has called you to do. So wait on him and stay in that race. Stay in the race and God will bring you out. Amen.